Hey science fans, it's John, your science material specialist, and today I'm in my secret lair getting ready to talk to you about the Petri dish investigation. There's a lot of confusion about the Petri dish investigation, how to put it together, and what you can do with it once you have colonies established on your agar. So uh, we're going to go through all that, and we're going to build this as we go. And we'll talk about uh, why we do and don't do some of the things that uh, are part of the confusion that I was just talking about. All right, so typically with your nutrient agar, uh, and I'm using nutrient agar because the list of things that grow on it is pretty extensive, but nothing particularly uh, alarming. You know, there's, there are kinds of agar that will let you grow things like anthrax and smallpox. Nutrient agar will not let you do that. Um, it just will not support those things. So that's good to know. Um, having said that, we still need to be careful with this once we do have a colony. So typically, you guys are going to have groups of four students, and you're going to divide this out, something like that, or maybe in half, depending on your groups, um, and how you decide to have them inoculate these, right? Okay. So now I want you to notice that I am marking that with the small side of the petri dish facing up. And the small side is the side that has the agar on it. And you can see that from the side. Now this is one from last year, so it's not gonna be any good anymore. You will notice, or maybe you will or will not, but oh, there you go, that there's moisture on the bottom part, on the larger plate, and that's exactly why we keep the agar on the top part of the plate because if we let that moisture condense on there and then drip down onto the plate you'll contaminate your different quadrants with stuff that you didn't want there in the first place okay so this only gets flipped over when you're ready to swab with your q-tip okay and then otherwise it stays facing down with the you know so that uh, you're protecting your agar as much as possible. All right, so you've got your quadrant, your student swab, right? And then close it back up. Now, this is where a lot of people go wrong, okay? A lot of people will take strips of tape and just tape that closed, and that's not good enough, okay? This needs to be sealed, okay? And which is, which is why Science Material Center provides you with electrical tape, okay? Electrical tape will stretch as you pull on it. So this is about a foot of electrical tape that I've cut already. And we're gonna make sure that we get it both on the larger plate and the smaller plate. And we're gonna stretch that as we go so that we don't get any wrinkles, okay? We're gonna keep it tight. I'm going to make sure that we've got good support on the part where, that we've already got stuck down so that we don't pull it off, okay? And we're going to stretch that around the whole outside ring, okay? If you get a, get a wrinkle like that, just pull it a little bit more. Now, this is why we, like I said, this is why we use electrical tape, because we want it to stretch. And you're not going to get that with duct tape or... Um, masking tape or even clear, you know, like cellophane tape. You have to use something stretchy, okay? All right, now we can make sure that that's good sealed like that, okay? And one foot of tape is more than enough. You saw that I had quite a bit of overlap. So one roll of this tape should get you through five classes, uh, full-size classes, easily, if you're doing groups of four, okay? Okay, and why is it so important to have this sealed up so well? All right, let's get into that, okay? Any given bacteria is gonna have a generation time, the amount of time it takes it to divide from one cell into two cells, okay? And that is the time over the number of generations will give you the growth rate. Uh, for E. coli, that's usually 20 minutes in good conditions. 
for some bacteria it's as low as four minutes, for some things it's as much as 20 minutes, okay? We're not gonna worry about the uh, number of generations too much here, because what we're really interested in is this side, okay? So G equals time divided by 3.3 .3 times the logarithm base 10 of our population at time t divided by our starting population, okay? Now, this is simple algebra, and I'll go through it with you real quick. So, we wanna isolate b, our, time, our population at our end time. So we're gonna multiply both sides by 3.3. We're gonna put, we're gonna bring log b over b to this side, put 3.3g under t, right? Now, to get rid of the logarithm, because it's base 10, we make it an exponent of 10, okay? We have to make the other side an exponent of 10 to make use the same operations on both sides, right? All right, so then the logarithm in the exponent will cancel out the 10 on this side, okay? We get b over b equals 10, to the power of t divided by 3.3g, okay? Now, that means that b at the end of our time period, whatever that time period is, equals our starting population times power 10 to the power of t over 3.3g. That's our exponent, okay? So if we decide to wait two days, 48 hours, t equals 48 hours, and we know that we have E. coli, let's say. We know that we've got a 20 minute generation time or one third of an hour, 0.33, depending on how long you let that trail out will determine your final outcome. Let's say we have one cell, okay? Our population at 48 hours is 4.3288 times 10 to the 43rd power. That means this number if we get rid of this this decimal, if we want to get rid of the 10 to the, to the 43, we need to move this decimal 43 spaces to the right, okay? So it's this number, one, two, three, four, so that's four spaces. So 39 more zeros after this number to get rid of that decimal, okay? Now, that's assuming constant logarithmic growth there is going to be a point in time at which logarithmic growth stalls and the growth rate flattens out for a short period of time, at which point the population will crash, literally dies off, okay? And Britannica's got a great article about this where I brought, where I found this equation so that I could show you this. Um, they also show you the graph of how that looks on a logarithmic graph. So even if we're not approaching this number, even if this were just, you know, in the millions, okay, that's still an enormous number of bacteria to have inside your Petri dish, okay? We do not want this to break open. We don't want any of it to escape. We don't want it to, you know, fall off a table and have it pop open, okay? We want this to be sealed, okay? They do not need any air, okay? There's plenty of air in there, and that, you know, maybe that's another limiting factor for them so that we don't get this kind of a number, right? So, seal these up tightly. When you are done, talk to your nurse uh, is your best choice. Your head custodian is a back up to that, but your your nurse is gonna be your best choice for discussing how to dispose of bio waste, okay? You need to treat this as bio waste, okay? You can't throw this in your regular trash can and assume that it's fine because someone downstream is gonna come across one of these that's broken or, you know, cracked, and they're gonna get exposed to whatever's in here, okay? We need to treat this as bio waste and dispose of it properly. If you do those things, if you seal it up properly, you keep it sealed, and you dispose of it properly, this is a very safe and very effective way to teach students about growth rates, 
about bacteria, about what's in their environment, what things they can't see, right? I mean, that's the whole point of it is to show the students that there are things in our environment that we can't see and under normal situations. So obviously, another thing to remember is since we don't want to open this, we cannot make samples to look at under the microscope, okay? This is not the time or place for that, and this is not the way to do it. So also, please do not make samples out of this. Keep it closed, send it into your, into, you know, into the proper, trash in the proper way as a bio waste, and uh, everything will be cool. All right, well, if you need anything, let me know. If you have any questions or any problems, let us know. We are excited to help you with your science education. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.